She's anyway, a literal child. Chris Hansen man, would love to know your location. <laughs> Chinoda, I'm going to need you to have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not sexualizing her. I'm doing the opposite. I'm like, she's a literal child. Why are know, these Chinoda. people being weird? I don't know, so Chinoda. We you pulled up your a little DM too much. <laughs> We, Chinoda, we've pulled up your DMs to uh, Omega over here on Twitter, and you want to explain yourself, sir, with these chat logs? Hello everyone, it is that time of the month again, time for Anime Club After Dark to pop a squad and hit you with all the best and worst of what we have been watching in the last month or so. My name is Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight I have our czar of source material, John. You know, eventually, I'm going to figure out something new to get you in the beginning. <laughs> it's easy now because I just, I cover up your face with the script and I don't have to see it. That is cheating. <laughs> That's you can't cheating, do that, Alex. sir. It's <laughs> bullshit. And we also have a dude who is very apt for you, Chinoda. Lives for Isekai. Hello. There's a lot of good shows this season. I well, listen. I that there's some good shows. I wouldn't necessarily say a lot, but there are some good shows. <laughs> also, um, if I sound a little bit different, uh, Polynes really whooping my butt this week so apologies for that man that oak pollen is killing you isn't it <laughs> do you guys remember a hentai called the pollenic girls attack no hold on no but i really don't like where this is going <laughs> so hold on keep talking <laughs> so in, in japan people a lot of people have allergies right and there's a bunch of pollen in the air Mm -hmm. So someone decided to make a freaking hentai based off of like pollen, where instead of being pollen, it just being pollen, the pollen is just, like shaped like boys and girls, and they just kind of like you just get attacked by them, aka they you have sex with the pollen. And I'm just like I remember watching this, and it, it's from like early 2000s, so it's like you know, early, imagine early 2000s hentai, and that's all you need to understand about it, the graphic quality. <laughs> However. Every time I think of pollen, I think of Japan was so fucking horny that they were like, you know what? We, all these pollens are fucking with our noses. Let's fuck the pollen right back. <laughs> God damn. Why is it always the Japanese that do this shit? No. Why does she have twin tails? Oh my God, he's looking it up right now. <laughs> this dude is, while we are in the middle of recording, is like, I'm going to check out this hentai. <laughs> Every time I think of pollen, I just think of that now. It's just, like, why, Japan? Why would you do this? They're people of culture. And there's more than one episode, by the way. I think there's, like, four. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good God. Well, there's a whole anime been... series in this. <laughs> now that we've been talking about this for the first, like, five minutes of the recording, and we're completely uh, not going to get any views from this because we said hentai three times now. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> let's actually talk about what we've been watching um so a uh, girls attack i just told you is that what you and the wife watched for hentai night <laughs> oh yeah yeah um so before we get into um some of the new stuff from this uh current anime season i want to talk about a couple of things personally from the last season um First of all, we I don't think we ever really talked about it at length on the podcast. If we did, it must have been an episode I wasn't there. Um, solo leveling was, like, one of the most anticipated things coming into the winter season, right? Right. Yep. And not without cause, because the manhwa that it's based off of is super popular. Yes. Um, yep. Now, I haven't read the manhwa. I still haven't read the manhwa. I have no intention of reading the manhwa. Uh, but I did watch the anime. And I have to say, it hits that what I call the sweet spot for me. Because we talk about a lot of anime that are like really, really bad, like the ones, twos, and threes out of tens. And we talk about the mid anime, the fours, fives, and sixes. And then we also talk about the greats and the masterpieces, the eights, nines, and tens. Very rarely do we talk about the seven out of tens, and that's exactly what solo leveling was to me. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. But that's what it was for me. 
you're not I wrong think... because that's what that part of solo leveling was. And I know John will agree to this. It's a big intro it's, is what it feels like. This is it the is, prologue. It is literally, literally the, prologue. the prologue. Yeah. I a... while solo leveling was airing, um, you guys know this. I ended up reading the manhwa and I read the whole thing in four days. Bless like you. I, I I was like, holy shit, this is addictive. And I was going through some stuff, so it was a good distraction. Mm -hmm. Um the part, what they aired was definitely the introduction. It was the beginning. It was the setup to everything. No one knows anything or understands what it really is about yet. Mm -hmm. And it gets so freaking hype later. Where it ended off is where it, where, where the tr story truly starts. Yeah. John, um, if you want to. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the manhwa right now. <laughs> uh, no, Just I was like, checking. let me refresh. Yeah, dude, I, I, one dude reading hentai, another one reading a manhwa. Jesus, I wanted to see how many chapters it was because I'm pretty sure when I talked about it originally, I was like doing the math. It's like, yeah, they're doing six and a half chapters per episode or whatever it was. So I was like, yeah, it's um out of a two hundred ish chapter manhwa, mm -hmm. it'll probably be like four seasons. So it was the first what, 207 chapters, including the bonus content. Oh, the epilogue stuff. I think. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to Which look Which is up... important in my opinion. I'm trying to freaking find a source that's like telling me how many chapters it was. Cause it just says, oh, there was 14 books. And it's like, okay, but. But how many I, chapters per book? How many, how many chapters in the manhwa? Not, not in the light novel or web novel. Yeah. Well, while you look that up, I, I do want to say there are things about it I absolutely love. Like uh, Hiroyuki Sawano's soundtrack, awesome. As we all knew it would be. Um, and I, I, for me, like the character designs and like the art style, it's it's whatever. I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't look stellar. Um, but the mystery element to the story is really the only thing that's kind of still hooking me. Like the whole fantasy, the, the going into the dungeon crawling, the gate stuff, it's like, it's whatever. The mystery element of like the whole system as the main character calls it, that kind of brought him back to life. Like that's the only like mystery element that still got me hooked. And it's what's got it to where it's good enough for me to want to continue it for at least another season. Okay. You know what? It's... That's fair. That's, um, kind of it the purpose is of that 179 arc. chapters for the main okay. story not including the side story stuff the epilogue stuff so 179 chapters and at six and a half chapters per episode we're looking at like three or four seasons of this basically if it's or four three, seasons about, about three seasons about three seasons if, if it's four if it, if it ends up being four seasons you know for whatever reason that's to me, this is my own opinion. I think that's bad if a quarter of your series is devoted to a prologue. You have to restructure your thinking because you're doing it in the way of adapting a manga. This is not a manga. This is a manhwa. They write it differently. They do it differently. So you can't think of it in the same way. Get it. I mean, the Koreans have a very different way of, of writing stories. They love to have really long, convoluted prologues. Okay. Um, World building matters, man. It looks like Solo Leveling Season 1 covers the first 45 chapters. Damn. So, what was it? 12 episodes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Calculator. I can't do. Well, I mean, times it was 12. technically thirteen because there was that one recap episode, but we don't. No, care. it was twelve episodes. <laughs> no, seven point five happened because he, the main voice actor, got COVID. Got so. COVID. Yeah, it's like he needs a week off to rest his voice, guys. He got the. Coof. So we're looking at like three point seven five chapters per. So let's just say like it's about four chapters ish, Roughly four ish four. chapters per episode, which yeah. is pretty slow. Of, uh, I mean. It's hard to compare because I believe this manhwa was a weekly release. I don't think it was a monthly. It might have been a monthly release. Let me check. Let's see. With that many chapters, though, I wouldn't think it'd be a monthly release. It might be a monthly release because it's only 179 chapters. But oh. if we do 179 divided by four, that's about... Man, yeah. we got the right yeah, It'd be about four. Job. It would be a 
just about four seasons for okay. all of it if it kept the same pacing as season one um which is like to me it's like okay yeah that's fine and like yes in traditional manhwa fucking fashion you need here's the prologue it's like 100 chapters long However, look, the prologue for this was only 45 chapters, guys. <laughs> that's half. That's, that's less improvement. than half. That's improvement. Yeah, no, 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 that's that's improvement. more than half. <laughs> it's, it's improvement. You're, you're doing well, Koreans. <laughs> well, because you got to think, like, a lot of, I, even in traditional mangas, there's hmm. about 25, 24-ish chapters that I would, I would consider the prologue, right? Where for a lot of starts, manga, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, the first arcs happened in the first 24. So with the whole uh, sense of, like, Korean light novels and man manhwa in general of, like, well, we need 100 chapters to preface everything before the story actually starts. It's, like, to me, some of it, the payoff is worth it. Some of it isn't. Um, yeah. Like, oh, hello. My cat's here now. <laughs> Hi, baby girl. I mean, would you say that something like maybe The God of High School is one where it's not worth it? <laughs> it's hard to say because after the prologue of God of High School, it I think it's pretty hype because um, mm. it's fighting. It's, it's just a freaking fighting anime, uh, mm. fighting manhwa. But I, I, I know it's rough to ask that. Like, it's rough to ask someone, hey, you need to watch the first 12 ep Like, the first 12 episodes is prologue. Once you get past that, though, it's amazing. It's like it's like me telling you, one piece is worth it. Just get to Arlong Park, bro. That's 60 episodes in. Yeah. Like, that's not... We, it ain't happening, Chief. Yeah. It's, I don't like, know. I, I find it hard to, like, tell people, go watch Dorara because you gotta watch the first nine episodes before it starts really getting good. Or Steins Gate. Or Steins Gate. You gotta watch the first six yeah. episodes before it starts getting really good. It's hard to yeah. say that. Because it's like that's a lot of, of a time investment. That's like a two two three hour time investment that you have to put in before it gets good. Like yeah. it should get good within the first four episodes. To be honest, like it, it's what we call a hook, right? You know, when you're writing a, yeah. a, a freaking novel or something, you write a hook to get someone like invested in the first paragraph or two. Yeah. From I feel like... what I've observed, uh, whether it comes to watching something or reading uh, anything, the longer it takes for that hook to land the more of a ask it is. And I can't oh, yeah. fault people for not wanting to make that investment. Yeah. They're missing out on something that could be really amazing. Uh, obviously, it's always up to personal taste. But the bigger the ask, the less likely people are to do it. Just because time is the most precious uh, resource anyone has. Yeah. Um, I mean, just for me, solo leveling just hit that sweet spot where it's, it's not... Uh, to me it's not great it's not a masterpiece but it's certainly not terrible or mid it's just a quintessential 7 out of 10 experience for me yeah I think that for the first 12 episodes it may not have an amazing hook like the rest of the story does but I think it's interesting enough to keep watching like first yeah. and foremost I, I rewatched episode 6 like 3 times just to, to see him freaking go like oh so you want to kill me then you need to understand that if you're ready to hunt then you're, you gotta be ready to be hunted and I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I will hype. say I will say the so midpoint hype. episode six is probably the best episode of the first season. Yeah, and at least me, in my opinion, that like it, the freaking musical swells from Hiyuki Sawano, like amazing. I mean, course, again, we always. all knew going into this if nothing else was good about this, the music was going to be awesome. Yeah, so uh, I I personally just be you know I'm very biased. I like the manhwa, I like the the web novel, so yeah. I was. I'm willing to stick this through this because I'm like, all right. Because I remember at the very beginning, I was like, I, I watched the first two episodes and I was like, was it really this slow in the manhwa? And I went back and I read the beginning of the manhwa and I was like, oh yeah, it actually is this slow in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I was is. like, oh, dang. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm going to at least give it one more season. Um, and we'll see. Um, I know the second season has been announced. Yeah, I don't know they if they already have a, did. Is it going to be airing later this year or did they give an air date yet? Uh, I don't remember actually. Let me let me look. No idea. Well, anyway, why you look that up? Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about real quick that uh, had it's still airing actually right now, but it it started airing Fourth last quarter season. of 2024. Oh, so uh, fall of and 2024. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, David Production. I just want to give them props as if as if we don't give them enough props for JoJo's already. Um, David Production has done an absolutely stellar job with the remake of Odyssey Yatsura. Um, 
the art and animation is great as I kind of expected being from David production. Um, and it's a great update to like the original art style and animation of the original from 1980 or 81, I think is when it first started airing. Um, and the crazy thing to me is this is based on a manga that was written starting in the late seventies into the early eighties. And they're still using a lot of the same jokes and gags from that manga and somehow they're making those same jokes and gags written all those years ago land without seeming cringy or outdated, which I give them amazing props to. I wonder if they're using the same type of jokes and just updating it for a more modern palette because it's I I'll have to go back and rewatch timeless. <laughs> Well, some of the, some of them, I feel like some of the gags are kind of like the physical gags. I think are kind of timeless, kind of like how the three Suges are still kind of timeless. It's it's physical comedy, um, right? But I'll have to go back and rewatch some of the original because all of the original Odessa Yatsura now is available on Crunchyroll. Um, I have never seen Odessa Yatsura. Um, I know nothing about it. Hmm. All I know is it's about an alien girl who falls to Earth, and it's supposed to be a rom com. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm going to segue into a, a shittier updated version of that. <laughs> okay. Well, before you do the one last thing I want to give uh, David production props for, I don't know if this was David productions like idea or it just kind of happened, but they have also brought back some of the original voice actors from the 1980s anime, which uh, is yeah. something I believe, super um, awesome. It was the, the mom is the original voice actor for the, the girl, right? From the original? Yeah, uh, Lum's mom is the is being voiced by Lum's original voice actor. And Atsuru's dad, who is the main guy in the show, uh, the original his original voice actor from the 80s is now Atsuru's dad in the new uh, remake. That's awesome. so cool. I love it really like is. That. So now the, awesome. the original uh, uh, voice actors are playing that, those characters' parents in the remake. I love that. I, yeah. I really do. All I know about this series is the Dojins I've read. Wow. Well, I mean, there's listen, there's been a lot of them. This thing's been around for a long time, and the creator of this is the same person who created uh, Inuyasha, so... Yeah. I mean, some of the, those Dojins I've read are, like, old, old, so... Anyway, I what do you want to transition this into, John? <laughs> so, there was a... Uh, a show that's airing this season that I, I watched the first episode. And I was like, this is just a shittier version of Urusei Yatsura, and I'm not going to watch this. And I've never even seen Urusei Yatsura. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> the premise is still the same, though, right? So, Astro Note. Oh. I, I don't believe any of us talked about this in the preview, and for good reason, because no. it's not great. Um, I, you know, in, in typical fashion, I'm like, all right, here are all the new anime that released the week of... And I'm like, I'm going to mm-hmm. watch them, right? So I watched Astronaut thinking like, okay, it's supposed to be like a a romantic comedy because that's yeah. what it says. And there's also like um, the the main character girl is an alien and she comes to Earth. And she's like, she's now the proprietor or property manager or something of this apartment. And they're, the main guy is like a chef guy. And it's like, okay, so it's supposed to be a, a rom-com about – this chef guy falling in love with this girl, but it turns out she's an alien. And Sugita is in the show. Rie Kugimiya is in the show. That alone should sell it for you. And I'm like, you know, two of my favorite all-time voice actors are in this show. And yet here I am watching it and be like, this is a giant fucking nothing burger. I don't (laughs) want to watch this show. Like the, the character designs and styles are very weird. I don't like them. Um, they're not beautified or anything like that. They're very cartoony, actually. Mm-hmm. And the there's like there's no romance or comedy element to it that make me go like, oh yeah, this is like great. I'm gonna watch this. So I don't know why it exists. Uh, I also noticed that the subtitles in it are just extremely horrendous. Was this I, this, I, is, this is the one you were uh, talking about on our Discord server about how like this almost seems like it was AI translated? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I remember there was that article that said Crunchyroll was looking into doing AI trans- translations, and I was like, yeah. oh god, that's going to not turn out very well for anyone. And there was a um, bunch of backlash to that too. And for a right I was, reason. you know, and I've been trying to brush up on my Nihongo to become Nihongo Jozu, <laughs> and I'm just like, because you know, I, I will watch things and I will. Mm-hmm translate it myself without watching the screen because i'm you know i'm I'm watching something but i'm not really watching something (laughs) yeah 
listen, if you can understand the language, you basically you're watching the show, all right? You're just watching it in the background. But yeah, a lot of the because I'm like listening to it, I'm like, okay, I know what they're saying, and then I'm reading the subtitles, I'm like, that's not what they're saying. So that's what made me curious. Like, did they roll out the shitty AI translations? Because like I don't understand. Um, for the most of other shows that I've been watching, they don't have the same like horrendous mistranslations. Like Maybe it, they it didn't make. Any- if they're rolling it out, I would. It, it, if I were going to do this, if I worked at Crunchyroll and I was dead set on doing that, rolling out the AI translations, I would definitely do it on an anime that we picked up for the cheap and that no one was going to watch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that'd be a smart Makes idea sense. because that's how I'd roll it out. Yeah, because no one's w- going to like notice. And it's like I, I don't know if it's bad AI translations or if they have like interns or at the localization team at Crunchyroll mm-hmm. and they're just like. You know, this is their first project because it's like this is a low impact thing. No one's gonna care that it's mistranslated. Yeah, and I'm just like, because I'm just reading it, and I'm just like, these, what you're saying is not what that means. And there's things that are translated that don't make sense, and things that are translated that they don't translate. Like, uh, there was like umeshu. It's like that's plum wine, right? Yeah, it's what people traditionally call umeshu. It's like a umeshu is like, also delicious. Yeah, it's like it's unripe plums, and then you um put sugar in it and you let it ferment and it turns into like this plum wine. It's delicious yes. and super sweet. So I'm less like, I know what Umeshu is and they don't translate Umeshu as plum wine. They just say, they just call it Umeshu. And I'm like, why wouldn't you translate that? Like of all the things you've like, there is that one scene that was like Itadakimas, right? Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, there's four different characters saying Itadakimas and they, each one of the characters now say something different. I'm like, which I I, I kind of get that in a way because that's a, that's a phrase that has no direct translation in English, and I've seen that translated a billion different ways in anime. Yeah, but it, it's egregious. it's all the same sentiment, but you can't say it different. Ways. I, I just think that it's weird that they would choose to. I know that they don't want to say the same four things in this in a row, right? But mm-hmm. they translated it as like it's Chow time, let's eat, time to dig in, and thanks. <laughs> Four different – these are all completely different phrases. Yes. Right? Three of them are kind of similar. One does not – it does not mean thanks, kind of. No, it does not mean thanks at all. <laughs> like, that's goch sosama. Like, that's what you would say after you eat, and you're like, thanks for the meal. Goch sosama. Yeah. But I was just – so I'm just like, I don't understand who translated this, who localized this. I don't know if it's an intern. I don't know if it's AI. Who approved of it. <laughs> like, I, to me, that that's important. You know, like, if you're, even is. if – even if you're, you know that this is a low impact anime. Like, why, why would you put a B team on this? It's that's pretty fucked up. And again, yeah. I, I don't know the reason for it. I'm not that invested into it. But the mid story, the terrible art and animation, like it's not terrible. It's just not, it's not my cup of tea. I don't think it's that. Like, it's not appealing. I should say, it's not mid or anything. It's just not appealing to me. And combined with the shitty translations, because I'm going to call them shitty translations. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to watch the show. Just avoid Astro Note. John, I would say it does matter because if it doesn't get fixed, it might wander into better quality shows that we actually do care about. I mean, <laughs> Yoho the ho and a bottle of rum, bro. Like, <laughs> uh, that is true. That is. No, I will say, we don't endorse that here, but <laughs> I don't endorse that because, like, um, I was looking at the fan translation for like free ran and i'm like dude these fan translations are ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does depend on what team does them but yeah that's true but like listen i a lot of fan translations are are rough okay i remember yeah. the, the old days of like nakama nakama means friend <laughs> all according to keikaku keikaku means plan yes <laughs> good times good times you know I will say, in slight defense of the way that Astronaut is translated, as you've pointed out, I am okay with translations that leave in some Japanese words that don't have good direct translations. Like, sometimes you right. get that, and it's fine. Yeah. Well, it's also hard to translate things like, so, for example, um, tomodachi. Tomodachi means friend, right? Yeah. Uh, nakama doesn't necessarily mean friend it's a deeper bond than that nakama is like you are my blood brother like we're gonna go yeah. to war and shit <laughs> that's isn't it, like it, isn't it more akin to the word like companion 
I mean, you can call well, it companion, but it the the meaning in Japanese is like different from just yeah. saying friend. Like it's different yeah. from saying friend because it's stronger than is, just a friend you met on the street. Yeah, like, yeah. A, a nakama, like he said, is, is your battle buddy. This is like yeah. they're they're ride or die. Yeah. So it's like it's hard to how do you translate that into English because we don't really like you can't. Oh, he's my ride or die. Like I don't think people are gonna understand that. I mean, I, I have a word for that. It's just Garrus Vicarian for Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, again, I understand localization is hard and it's hard to translate things. It's it's difficult, but I just think there is no excuse to use shitty AI translations. I yeah. think it's no excuse to put your interns on this and not have at least someone like spell check them and be like, oh yeah, this is what you should do. Like, But I, I, I am also okay Especially with translations. Especially when we're paying for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm also okay with translations though that do leave some Japanese words in there. Like, like for example, there's a lot of of anime that you just use the Japanese words for um, foods, and they don't bother translating them. I am fine with that. Yeah, like um, and then even um, what was it non sequiturs? Yeah, like oh, let me say something. Monogatari is rife with that shit. <laughs> and also like um, titles like Nissan. Nesama yeah. and all that, like Anaki, Anago. Yeah, like, I'm fine with that those too. All leaving, mean, leaving the like, honorifics in is fine with me. Well, like Anaki or Anago means like older brother, older sister. But again, it's more respectful. Like your Anago is like big, big boss. <laughs> You're yeah. a big boss lady, right? I've also seen that word uh, translated as chief, like a yeah. boss. Actually, yeah, I've seen it translate a lot more as chief rather than uh, yeah. big boss lady. Because that's what anyway. I mean. And that's I mean, it's your on a goal, but yeah, yeah. it's Japanese is muzukashi, you know, <laughs> Nihongo muzukashi. <laughs> All right, uh, Chinoda, what do you got to talk about? Um, now this is not anime, but it is animation. Uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch has been airing, and I have been loving it. It's the final season, and it has been pulling out all the stops. I mean. It's gotten super dark. Uh, the characters are even better. The shading on the show is fucking amazing. The musical scores are topped here. I love everything about it. It has been no great for me. Uh, all the Star Wars fans that I talk to have also been loving it. And I'm just like, holy shit, they are really pulling out all the stops this season. It's the final season, so I get it. Mm. But it, I'm just like, wow journey of like years is coming to an end and they're doing great so i'm super happy about it um anyone who cares about the animated star wars stuff i would highly recommend please go watch it it's about to end pretty soon we only got like two, three two or three episodes left and my god it, it's been amazing it really has i'm glad you like it i have nothing to say because i haven't seen it yeah. I've seen <laughs> clips from it. Um, I don't know. I just I'm not that invested in the Star Wars. Like I like the Clone Wars stuff, so I know I'd like Bad Batch. You like the Mandalorian? That's true. I do like the Mandalorian. Where's but, Baby Yoda? Um, <laughs> no, I like it because of Pedro Pascal. But I I like Clone Wars stuff, so I know I'd like Bad Batch because that's what it's about. Mm. I just don't feel yeah. the need to go watch it because I'm like. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure people will eventually spoil Bad Batch for me, and I'll learn of oh, the of story course. along the way. As if it's uh, Star like every Wars part fans, of Star of Wars they'll has been, spoil it for you. Uh, like every thing part I know of Star about, Wars has been spoiled for you. <laughs> yeah. The only other thing I know about Bad Batch is there's apparently like a underage girl or something in the squad, and people are sexualizing her, and there's like the fandom would split between like don't do that and like it's fine, it's it's cartoons, and I'm like, what what's going on here? What I, is happening? <laughs> have not heard this um i'm glad not to have heard of this listen what the I, fuck? this was when i was still on reddit and it was reddit talking about twitter drama and i'm like so it's oh never mind it's... you you literally just explained it twitter all right everything <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> everything after that is okay it doesn't matter Man, reddit explaining twitter drama that's like five it's because i refuse to set foot into that cesspool known as twitter right so I have to get it through secondhand information through other social media platforms where they some they they put on the toxic vests and suits and go through it and I I they pull it out from you to view. That's you you want you want the report from like the toxic cleanup guys. 
Yeah, I, I don't want to step into that. But if you guys want to step into it and tell me what's happening, that's fine. You say that, John. You say that. But, you know, stumbling into Twitter is like going to the airport and just watching people. Because there's some entertainment to be had if you're just there watching. If you're not engaging and just watching, there's some good entertainment. Yeah, so I I think it's a, it's similar to how, like, when Stranger Things is popular, or I guess Stranger Things still is popular, but uh, while Stranger Things was getting... Yeah, it's still popular. Come on now. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, it's still pretty popular. With, it's with still pretty popular. Middle America, yeah, it's still heavily popular. Considering oh, right. the kind. statistics on Netflix, it's still very popular of a show. Yeah. Uh, but with, like, uh, what's her name? Millie Bobby Brown? Is that the girl yeah. who plays yes. Eleven? So, like, again, with Twitter fanatics, people drawing, like, kind of not safe for work pictures of her and then, like, over-sexualizing her in different Excuse poses me, and stuff like that. Excuse me, I have to go throw up. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in, in typical Twitter fashion, they, they take things like that and they just go wild with it because they're like, oh, we can do it with Wild Abandoned. Because don't worry, I drew her, but she's 18, guys. I drew her and she's 18. All characters depicted are 18 plus. Yeah, as long as I put that disclaimer, you can't you legally you can't do anything to me, apparently. And I'm like, that's not how that works. So, I'm again, I'm I'm sure Bad Batch is amazing. I'll, I'll probably love it because again, I loved uh, Star. Uh, yeah. the Clone it Wars. is a direct continuation of the Clone Wars. Yeah. So I'm like, is Rex in it? Yes, actually. Oh my God! See, I'd love it then. <laughs> now he's not a main character, but he is in it. Yeah, I, I figured because the Bad Batch doesn't follow Rex and his crew; it follows like no, the Bad Batch. The Bad Batch, yeah. Yes, I know. I know of. I guess I know a little bit about it. I just yeah. haven't wanted um, to watch it. Also, TL, uh, TLDR of uh, the clone you're t the one you're talking about is a clone. Uh, also, her name is Omega. She's one of the few female clones that were uh, created, and she's also older than all of them. Technically, oh. she doesn't have the uh, aging part. But she's actually one of the first clones created. Oh, so she doesn't age, but she looks like she's eleven. Got it. So it's, uh, it's so I understand why yeah. you're defending Twitter now. Okay, I get Twitter's <laughs> argument. <laughs> no, guys, guys, she's thirty years old. She just looks like she's twelve. Okay, canonically, she's she's thirty two. No, 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 no. She is canonically like eleven Stop. or twelve. Stop. Cease. <laughs> Cease. <laughs> Like, it's everyone else that's actually aged up because they grew up quicker. She's actually still a child, even though she's one of the first. I don't care, dude. She looks like Y'all need old. Jesus. She <laughs> is a child. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, everyone is older, but they're the same. Uh, they're younger ages. Everyone else is the ones that are aged up. She's anyway, a literal child. Chris Hansen man, would me... love to know your location. <laughs> Chinoda, I'm going to need you to have a seat. <laughs> What do you mean? I'm not sexualizing her. I'm doing the opposite. I'm like, she's a literal child. Why are know, these Chinoda. people being weird? I don't know, so Chinoda. We you pulled up your a little DMs. too much. <laughs> we, Chinoda, we've pulled up your DMs to uh, Omega over here on Twitter. And... <laughs> do you want to explain yourself, sir, with these chat logs? <laughs> anyway, uh... um... Uh, can we talk about literally Hollow? anything else? <laughs> can we talk about can we talk about Spice and Wolf? Yes, I would love to talk about Spice and Wolf. Um, I, I just wrote down here, and it's absolutely true. The hollow shaped hole in my heart has finally been filled. Um, <laughs> I now, John, we talked about this during the preview about how they may have made this uh, new like remake of the anime uh, to sort of sell the new sequel. Uh, light novel series Wolf and Parch Parchment. I yep. was surprised. I, I didn't. I, did, I thought that was what they were doing. I was surprised that the like framing device at the beginning of this anime adaptation is from Wolf and Parchment. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Uh, so I was talking to one of my um, other anime friends, and he didn't know what was going on because he doesn't know anything about like the video game, the VR video game, or mm -hmm. Wolf and Parchment because he didn't know there was a sequel. He, mm -hmm. But he knew that um, he watched the original Spice and Wolf. So he was like, yeah, I thought it was weird. I was like, is that hollow? And I'm just like, dude, that's, yes, that's hollow. And that's, that's their daughter. <laughs> like, so for people who don't know. Um, spoilers, by is, the way, for Spice and Wolf about major to happen. spoilers. <laughs> there, there is a daughter character. Um, 
Muri. There is a VR game, right? And that cabin that the beginning part takes place in, that's part of that VR game. You're in that cabin because it's kind of a tie-in to Wolf and Parchment. Not yeah. a tie-in. It is from Wolf and Parchment. So it's just like, I remember um, right when I watched the episode, I DM'd you, or I, I pinged you, and I was like, you were right. They did. <laughs> it's a nod to Wolf and Parchment. We, we're getting Wolf and Parchment, baby. That's what they're doing this yeah. for. That's what it's I, about. I have a feeling now, since they've started it with that framing device, I have a feeling that it's going to end on that same framing device, and it's going to lead right into Wolf and Parchment. Honestly, yeah. that would be really cool. I, I, think, I think that's what they're doing, especially if the anime does well. I would not be surprised that uh, a Wolf and Parchment anime adaptation, once this gets finished, gets greenlit. Yeah, because I remember talking about the, um, like, I didn't understand why they would want to remake Spice and Wolf. And then you were like, mm. because there's a sequel novel. I'm like, what? Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. There is a sequel one. I forgot all about that because I've, I've never read the novel. I like mm. Spice and Wolf. I've never read the novel. Um, I will say so far, of course, at the at the time we're recording this, there's only two episodes out. Um, also, uh, man, when they said that the the release date was going to be April first, I'm like, don't do this to me. My heart can't take it, man. <laughs> this Poor is exactly Alex would have died. Oh, this is exactly the kind of April Fool's joke I would fall for, and it would break my heart. Uh, <laughs> it comes to April first, and like, gotcha! It's just a pinball machine. <laughs> it's just a gotcha. I think or Alex a... actually would have cried. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a new gotcha game. Um, uh, I also didn't no. realize that uh, Lawrence's last name is actually Lawrence, and his first name is supposed to be Kraft. Yes, Kraft. <laughs> his like, first name is Kraft. His last name is Lawrence. And I'm like, that sounds so weird. His first name is actually Kraft, and his last name is Lawrence. I hate Which that. has always been kind of a, a thing. It with should be like Lawrence the, Craft. Like, come on, guys. It's always Craft it's always been Lawrence. like a, a question in the in the, like the Spice and Wolf community because first of all, how to pronounce Holo's name because there's no L sound in Japanese. But the creator of Spice and Wolf has said emphatically over and over again, it is even though we can only say Horo in Japanese, her name is actually Holo. Um, but also whether Kraft is his first or his last name, <laughs> because in Japanese it's rendered as Lawrence Kraft. Yeah, because huh. Lawrence would be his last name. Kraft's, but Kraft it's always be been first name. It, but it's always been translated in the English light novels as Kraft Lawrence. <laughs> oh, that's so confusing. What the hell? It's fine. They yeah. only call him Lawrence anyway, so who cares? Yeah, everyone yeah. always just calls him by his surname anyway. It's it's fine. It's fine. It's like Shepard in Mass Effect. Everyone just calls Shepard Shepard. Um, is that, Shepard is that has another Shepherd? name? Yeah, like, isn't it just Shepard? No, canonically, Shepard's name is John Shepard. I thought it was Commander. Yeah, yeah I Commander. Thought it was Commander. Yeah, <laughs> Commander is canonically Commander Shepard's first name. Uh, but no, I so far, I'm absolutely loving these first two episodes that I've seen. Um, I... I love the new art style because it's it's mimicking the art style from the um, the light novels. Um, Kevin Pinkin's soundtrack so far is just absolutely S tier. Um, I want to ask, what do you think about the fact that uh, the animation uh, or the style of it uh, is so different from the original anime? I like the original anime's art style and the way it was animated. But I feel like this is more in line with how, like, the characters and the world appear in the light novels. So, as a light okay. novel fan, I love it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I personally prefer the original just because it's more stylized. However, uh, in this, in the remake, Lawrence doesn't look like he's fucking 40 years old. He, he actually <laughs> looks like a 20-year-old guy, which is yeah. pretty awesome. Um, it's funny. The voice in, in acting the, is... In the novels, he's 27 years old. In the original anime, he looks like he's near 50. Yeah, really? He's... Oh, they draw him oh. a lot older in the original, but you know, yeah, everything from the the voice acting to the like, other than the art style, like it still it looks great. It doesn't look bad at all. Um, there's CGI in certain parts, but it's like you know it doesn't matter. CGI always pulling the cards. Is it done well or is it okay? No, no it's, oh, it's just bad. like it's, it's it's passable. Okay, it's yeah. You know what? It's not passable. Awful. It's fine. Passable is fine. I can work it's, with that. It's stereotypical CGI that you find in most anime. Like when they're doing the villagers dancing thing, it's like they're all a bunch of CGI 
dolls. They're all moving at the exact same time, so they quite literally just duplicated the CGI dummies yeah. and changed oh. the models and made them dance uh, at the same time. It's and I'm just like, for background I mean, It's not a main though. focus, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not a main it's... focus, so it's okay. It's whatever. Yeah. It, it's that's it's fine to use CGI like that. It saves time and money and effort, so who cares? Because um, um, the main story about Spice and Wolf is about the you know the banter between Holo and Lawrence and the and they're nailing economics. that so far with the yeah, remake. Oh my god, it's it's just like the original, and I love it's, you know the voice acting is just so phenomenal. I'm so glad I, they so got mostly so so back. glad they got the original voice actors for Holo and Lawrence back. They have announced that they are doing an English Crunchyroll is doing an English dub of this. They haven't announced the voice cast yet. I really 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 hope they can get the original English cast back too. I don't think I've ever watched Spice and Wolf in English, so, like, <laughs> I don't really it was care. A, it, was, it was a great dub back in the day. Um, uh, Brina Palencia was Holo, and J. Michael Tatum was Lawrence. So Are they hope... still uh, in the business? Yeah. Um, okay. I think uh, Brina mostly does, like, ADR directing now, but she still does do some voice acting. Um, but I hope the, I hope they can at least get those two back. Um, because they were great in the original English dub. Um, also, one thing I think they're handling in this remake better than in the original is Holo's nudity. <laughs> because in the original, they draw, like, her boobs, and there's just nothing there, like, at all. <laughs> what? Like, there's no nipples or anything. Um, in the remake, they actually have her hair covering it, so that's a lot better, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. they, More they hide her. More clever censorship. Yeah, they yeah. just hide it with like framing, framing devices. Yeah. Like now you can't see her butt or her boobs. Yeah, because she's supposed to have like genitalia, but you know. Yes, and in the manga adaptation, boy, do they draw it! <laughs> oh my god, the the manga adaptation is actually drawn by a hentai artist. I mean, that's I amazing. Like... <laughs> that is actually amazing. Quick story time. I remember oh, back go. in high school, uh, in ad we had our anime club, right? And of course I was in there. Um, this was while I was uh, in charge. Um, one of the kids wanted to uh, show Spice and Wolf. And keep in mind, this was in high school. And I was like, yeah, I've seen a couple episodes. I always remembered it uh, being excellent. So I was like, yeah, sure. Throw it on the screen. I forgot about the fact that Hollow loves to be nude so much so <laughs> when, it, when it started uh when the showing started i was like wait a minute and then she came up and like no fuck fuck we're in high school we can't do that here we are not in the, the right setting i was like fuck no stop 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 turn it off i was like fuck we can't john, do that john do you know what the most unbelievable part of that story is that shinoda was in charge of the anime club <laughs> Why does that surprise you? Oh, it, it it surprises me greatly. Fuck off. I think Shinoda is pretty social. He could be the club leader of an anime club. No, I I, I, I know he can believable. be so. Oh, oh I, I know he can be social. He's very sociable. I'm talking about his organizational skills. <laughs> I managed to keep that thing running perfectly fine. Thank you very I much. I believe you. I believe you, but I don't know. It doesn't sound like you believe him. <laughs> Especially with, do you understand how fucking difficult it was with a bunch of introverted weebs that barely know how to communicate? How fucking difficult it was to get them to organize to do shit. My I, I have, God, I have been to anime conventions. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, new spice yeah, and wolf. So, great, great so far. Uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I, I, I'm iffy about one specific thing because I saw it in the opening sequence and I'm like, ah, oh, they're gonna use CGI for that part and that's gonna fucking suck. I know what you're Especially talking about. Especially since they didn't right. use CGI for it when she when she did it in the beginning. She, they they drew that. And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why was it an CGI? important part? It's I mean it's something you're not gonna see very often. It's yeah, ah. it's it's something. It quite literally is gonna happen at the end, but. I saw it in the opening. I'm like, I know what they're going to do. I see it. I foresee it. You've already thing, drawn it. I know what you've done. One thing that has been announced since we did the preview that I did want to touch on real quick, I do believe this, uh, at least this season of it, is going to be 25 episodes. Which was, uh, it's 12-12, right? For season one and two of the original? Yes. So, that's so they're basically doing the first two seasons worth of content in one season. 
I like that. That sounds good yeah. to me. With the same amount of episodes. With the length of the manga slash light novel as is, um, how many seasons will it be for a full adaptation, would you guys say? Assuming they keep the same, relatively the same pacing of the original series, um, I would say four to five seasons. Really? Oh There's wow. that much more content. There's uh, 17 volumes. So okay. season no, one and two, cool. do that, that just covers like three volumes per it covered, yeah, it's basically six volumes for the between the two original seasons. Okay, so that means that would be like four or five seasons. Yeah, uh, that's quite a lot. Now, I, now I have to. There, there's also these like in between like novels volumes in the light novel. They're called like spring logs and um, side colors, which are essentially just collections of short stories. I don't think they're going to animate those. Because a lot of those are short stories that center around characters that aren't Holo and Lawrence. Oh, okay. okay. So. Um, and it, it's a lot of it is just world building and character development for, like, minor characters. Yeah, and if yeah, they really... they'll probably if, skip a lot of that. Well, especially since they're, like, it seems like they want to be selling Wolf and Parchment. So hmm. the sooner they get to, like, hey, now we can sell Wolf and Parchment. Though I, I think it'd be really shitty if they just remade just this one season. Uh, just to do like, oh, we did a full adaptation of the original anime, which is the first, you know, 24 episodes. Now we're going to yeah. skip everything in between. Go directly from, to Wolf and Parchment. Yeah, from like, we're going to skip volume 7 to 17, and we're just going to go to Wolf and Parchment, guys. It's like, I'd be very hell? surprised if they did ten, something like that. Ten, there's 10 freaking volumes of light novel that we're missing, but okay, I guess, whatever. I can play, I can play the VR game to just fill in the blanks, I guess. I, I do think there might be because the original anime series kind of skipped over it. I believe it's volume four um, of the light novel. They pretty much skipped over it. Like 90% of that light novel is just pure world building. So they might kind of yada yada over that. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, let's move on from Spice and Wolf. We talked about it long enough. Well, speaking of censoring, um, Remonster <laughs> came out. And I have seen the first two two episodes. Hmm. Um, have you guys watched Three Monster yet? Yeah. I have not watched the show, but I have watched the OP. And that, let me tell you something. That OP is one of the biggest piles of shit I've ever seen committed to film. <laughs> wow. Why do you say that? Strong Jesus. opinion, but okay. That song sucks. <laughs> yeah, the song kind of sucks. I don't like that the song. That song is just, oh my god. And the, the animation is just like, eh? yeah if it looks like i'm looking at chinoda i'm not my cat's in front of the computer so i've been oh be kind of just giving the cat the attention here. keeps trying to attack my keyboard and i don't want to get like <laughs> alt f4 out of here so uh, <laughs> so remonster aired and right off rip they started censoring stuff and skipping stuff from uh, how much only... have they skipped and censored so in episode two it's we see that the um the captured human humans that birth all the goblins they all of a sudden just like decided to unalive themselves yeah um, nice. it's insinuated that they found poison and took it but if you connect the dots it's like okay well the only person who can create poison in this entire scenario oh is is uh gabro Go, the main character so he obviously so in the light novel and also in the manga uh he goes or in the web novel because i haven't read the light novel I've read the web novel difference there's a difference but uh in the web novel and in the manga he actually goes to the slave women and um he he actually does like so one of the uh, women die from disease so he eats her and he actually gains the he gains the ability of whatever he eats so he actually gains the ability to speak human they skipped that. They didn't show that. Like, that's the reason he can even speak human in the first place. So it doesn't make sense why he was able to do it in episode two. He actually ate a human already. Um, he also, he goes up to the, uh, basically the people who birthed his generation of goblins, and he asks them, like, do you want to live? Like, if you don't, then take this potion. He made a poison for them. So they totally just skipped that. And it's just, like, they didn't show the humanity of Gobro. Which I was like, you know, that's kind of a little bit important to it, but I get it. Like the main point of this manga or anime is is it's supposed to be about fights and battles and stuff, which they did an excellent job with. Like the red bear fight was really cool. 
It was a big moment in the um in the original as well in the web novel and the manga. Uh, something else that they skipped was he wanted so Gaburo wanted the old hobgoblins to actually try to attack and uh, assault the new human slaves that they caught because he wanted to eat a goblin. Oh, but he didn't have a good excuse to do it. But now that these guys, so he, it's like, he's kind of in the original web novel and in the manga, he's a little bit more conniving. He makes people do things without them realizing it. Cause he's like, you guys can't help yourselves. And this lines up perfectly because I want to eat a goblin to see what you taste like. So he's like, yeah, it's a little bit more messed up. Um, so they, they change that, which is like, it's not a bad change. They're, they're making him less of a conniving evil person and more of like, oh, a traditional hero, which I think is like, that's fine for the framing. Um, I'm not sure how I'm they're going to be do honest, it. John, hearing that I'm actually extremely disappointed now. I want that. I want that darkness. Yeah. That, so, well, I remember originally was like, yeah, it's about goblin, goblin D's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> goblin be but, doing things. Yeah. Which, but I, I mean, it's a good thing because it's, I don't think Gabro is a traditional main character because he's a goblin and he does things that satisfies his self uh, needs first and foremost. Like that's his entire personality. He does things because he wants to, but in the anime, they're making him more of like, so they made it a bigger deal in the um, web novel and the manga that when he saves the rest of the goblins at the end of episode one, he he talks about it a little bit where he's like, I feel nothing towards these goblins because like they're just green monsters. Like who cares about them? But then he he slowly over time realizes that once he becomes the captain of them, he becomes the new leader of the goblins. He starts feeling like something like companionship or kin kinship with these guys because now they're his soldiers. They're they're his people, his tribe. So that's something that builds up slowly, but they kind of just off rip they made him like care about them it's like he didn't care about them off rip he actually could care less and didn't care if they died huh. hence you know the whole eating the hobgoblin thing learning trying to see if he can learn skills because his entire personality is like i can learn skills by eating so uh, that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna kill people and eat them to get their skills and abilities so you know them skipping all these things like does it really matter no because the main like 60 percent of the story is going to be just him fighting stuff so i get that they just skip this it, it makes it more palatable in my opinion for a casual anime viewer versus what like the, the casuals i want the darkness <laughs> it's not even that dark in my opinion because like, i would it's... disagree what you described is pretty dark like it's not the most dark thing we know of but like for the average stuff that airs that's pretty dark uh it, oh, it gets a lot worse and darker oh i bet i mean it's got there's <laughs> There's other things that I'm like, I'm not sure how they're going to translate that properly to try to make Gaburo not seem like a shitty human being. Or I guess he's not Gaburo anymore after episode two. He's, he's I believe he, has, he should have a new name. It should be Apro. But huh. because okay. like, so how the, the naming convention for the goblins go like Gob, because they're goblins. So your prefix is going to be like your species. Then your last part is going to be your actual name. So his name is actually Ro. So if he's he's Gabro because he's a goblin, but now that he's evolved again, his new name should be Apro. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, they also did not. All go this into sounds just like a like, shitty version of Slime Tensei. I, I don't know. I think that Slime Tensei uh, is no. It's different. It, it's it's different. The thing about Slime Tensei is that like nothing bad ever happens ever. Like that's, that's just true. Because of the power of good and goodness and main character syndrome, nothing bad can actually happen. Like, there's no actual permanent death. There's always a happy like... ending. Yeah. There's, like, he can always do everything. Rimuru can do everything. In the um, Remonster, I wouldn't say that there's a happy ending for everyone. There is death and destruction. <laughs> there's people literally being chopped in half and being eaten and stuff. And, like, there's military engagement and stuff like that. Hmm. But... There's also like slaves and stuff. Worse. <laughs> and, and worse. Nice. So I I think that they're gonna make mm -hmm. the anime a lot more tame than the source and the manga, which is fine. I, I don't care about that too much. Because again, I care more about when I read this originally, I cared about the fights anyway. So I'm fine with them emphasizing the fights. But even in the fight scenes, like 
they don't spend as much time as they do in the web novel, at least talking about how he can link skills together and like all, all the transfusion and learning all these skills. They spend no time doing that. Actually. He just kind of does them. He's able to synthesize it. He's able to do this. He's able to do that. They got the yada yada over it. I'm like, dude, the interesting thing to me about this was the battle mechanics. <laughs> and you're just yada yada over it. What the heck? <laughs> so, oh, that is kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. As far as an anime adaptation goes, like it's pretty egregious with how much it's changed. But I understand why they would make these changes because not you know they they have to make anime palatable to the masses, they have to make the show yeah. palatable to the masses, and it's not like this it's not like Re Monster is a, a new defining show that has a new genre or a new story to tell. It's like no, it's a typical battle anime. It's not that unique. So, fair enough. Yeah. All right, I'm still gonna keep watching it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, same. Like I said, I like the fights. I, the next upcoming fights are gonna be really cool. All right, all right. And we'll see how they handle the orgy scene. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, if it, if what you've said is anything to go off of, they just won't. <laughs> they might just yada yada over it, yeah. Oh, that'd be sad. Uh, put your dick away, Chinode, please. <laughs> it's your turn, by the way. Oh, right. Uh, boys, I have a reason to live again. Because <laughs> Peak is back? Season three, baby! <laughs> Peak is back. Peek is back, along with Best Girl. Oh. <laughs> I mean... Oh. Is that supposed okay. to be... Yes, please get your titties closer to the camera. <laughs> it's Chomosuke. Oh. Yeah, hold on. Here. We, we, yes, we're familiar with Chomosuke. Well, I was giving John a better look. Uh, yes, yeah, Konosuba's no. back. Yeah, literally <laughs> today... It finally officially came out <laughs> yes yeah, so, some people some people because of crunchyroll's carelessness got to see it a little early i thought it was uh it wasn't crunchyroll's carelessness i thought it was um uh, from what i have understood this. it's some kind of exploit that someone was able to to get in from some kind of back door to do i don't know but oh i heard a whole nother thing okay it could be i haven't really looked into it originally what i heard was there was some kind of exploit with the website that someone figured out so i haven't looked that looked into it at all but what okay a uh, quick note uh as a tldr um episodes uh from crunchyroll were leaked online not just of konosuba a couple of different things as well that's what mm -hmm. we're talking about um I haven't looked into this at all, but what I heard was um, was at a con pre-screening, pre uh, someone left uh, access to a couple of episodes on like a desk and someone swiped them or something. That's what I heard. Again, haven't looked into this at all, cannot confirm anything whatsoever, but that's just what I heard. So two entirely different stories. I have no clue what's real. I'm sure someone's going to be facing a lawsuit, though. Someone somewhere fucked up is what we know. Yeah. Someone somewhere is going to be getting fucked. <laughs> Eventually, I'll know. watch Konosuba season two in the movie and the spinoff. <laughs> yeah, and I can watch Megumin season three. One day I'll do it. I'll sit down and do it. It's so worth it. Um, No, season three is here. Finally, I am so freaking happy the the comedy the characters the voice acting the music animation everything's back it is so fucking beautiful i was just oh man i was i was brought back into being happy again the the happy chemicals were being put on here and i'm just like mm -hmm. it's nice this is nice life's good again konosuba is that for me and you know what things are just right and but no, really, the quality episodes. is like this was just episode one, but uh, like I don't know why, but the quality fell really fucking strong. I was, it kind of knocked me out of the park. I, I like, and it was just an average episode too, like nothing special, nothing important story wise. It was just like, yeah, season three, episode one, like nothing important particularly happens. It is a a, a new studio. I mean, uh, yeah, the studio did the Megamine spinoff last year too, but um. That looked really good from the from the word go, and I mean, this new studio seems to be really damn good at this shit. Yeah. Although we do have to say, um, we did talk to, talk about this in the preview as well. It like almost 
all the old uh, cast, especially the uh, higher ups, uh, are the ones that did the previous stuff as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe so, they got more money. Maybe they do. I don't know. I would love to see a budget sheet for this later. Oh, Konosuba, Konosuba seems to be a pretty darn good money maker, especially in Japan. So, hell, not just in Japan, I would say. Well, yeah, like, it's pretty popular outside of Japan too. But even yeah. in Japan, like it, it is a big money maker. Oh, definitely. I'm happy oh. though. I'm I'm happy we got more Konosuba. Um, it seems like they're determined, no matter what happens, to do a full adaptation of Konosuba at this point. Man, if it keeps going, I'll, I'll I will be so fucking happy. If I if I ever became ultra rich, I would be funding it. I'd be like, don't worry about it, guys. Just keep on making it. Just finish it up, bro. Bro, I've said this before on the podcast. If I ever win one of those giant lotteries, like those billion dollar plus lotteries, I'm gonna like go to Trigger and be like, hey partnership <laughs> like hey are you gonna finish little witch academia <laughs> could, could you use an extra 400 million u.s dollars <laughs> i have uh, nothing down <laughs> like that's okay that's okay <laughs> alex what's your next uh show uh, I, the next thing i want to talk about is um uh, you know what shinoda fuck you is what i want to talk about i want to i want to yeah. just absolutely <laughs> throw you i'm gonna throw you completely into the bus because now i am on like 18 different lists one of them is the no fly list um <laughs> you know, th this this motherfucker this absolute bastard said hey alex you know what you should do you should watch the seventh prince i think you'd like it and i naively believed okay sure it's only one episode i'll watch it and then i realized oh god there's two episodes out i guess i'll watch both of them and my god was i assaulted my senses were assaulted i was offended by what i saw First of all, good, good. First of all, <laughs> I, mm, I have to ask, why they draw his hips like that? Why, why they draw his hips like that, Shoda? I you cannot say that because we don't want to get I, banned. So I knew going into this because we talked about it during the the uh, the preview, right? I knew going in that the main character was a Shota. I was like full blown expecting that. Okay. I didn't I mean, think John he had... described it, so that's I, why I was, I was I interested. You all. I still was like, "Hey, yo!" I was not expecting when I watched the first episode that they would that this Shota would have like fucking K on levels of baby making hips. What the actual <laughs> fuck? And we're bad. <laughs> and canceled. Can I... Have you guys read the comment section for the videos on Crunchyroll? There's no, so many people no. like that's not the twist is that that's not a boy that's gonna be a girl and I'm like oh, <laughs> oh yeah the cope the cope and seed the cope, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the cope. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint all of you um, deniers out there but Lloyd indeed is a boy <laughs> cock and balls confirmed sir. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to think about this show. My God. First of all, the technical stuff out of the way first. From an animation art standpoint, it's kind of mid, let's be honest. But really? I completely I disagree. disagree with that. I disagree I with you, Alex. I completely disagree, I Alex. The, the 3D CGI that I've seen so far has been very forgettable. Like, it tries to do, like, this spin-around thing, like, where it uses the back... Like, turns the CGI or the background into like this CGI background and it does like the spin around thing with the camera like it it doesn't look great to me. I know they so do I it to it like fantastic. emphasize space in the action sequences but so I I was concerned about how they were going to animate this because one of the things the manga does really well other than like drawing everyone so fucking beautifully is <laughs> that uh to make emphasis on power they do color panels where like yeah. it'll be black and white then all of a sudden like the magic starts glowing in the actual manga panels. By the way, and, I went and ooh. tried to find some manga panels. I am definitely on a fucking list now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so I was worried like how are they going to translate that because anime is already in color. So yeah. how are you going to emphasize the power of magic? I'm like, well you can use sound design. It's one thing yeah. for like the impacts and sounds. And 
I think those sound all right. And then the glowing effects for the magic and stuff, I think those are all right too. Uh, they're not as impressive as the manga does it because it's like it's such a stark contrast between black and white yeah. panels to like all of a sudden full blown color. Like it's that's one thing I th- I feel like color. hasn't translated well from the manga to the anime, which is like that sucks because that's the main appeal of why I like Seven Prince is that Lloyd is just like I don't give a fuck. Let me test my new magic. It's so cool. Like he's like because they, they show that in the the anime in the first episode to, in the second episode where they're like he's like hey, he's I have a magic seven di- <laughs> yeah he's a magic junkie and he's like I have combined seven different spells. <laughs> you know it's just like what do you do? He ripped a fucking tear in space. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just casually, literally rip ozone layer. <laughs> yeah. Also, again, I was I thought fucking it was cool. I w- w- the first like two seconds of the first episode literally blasted in the face with Dio. My God, <laughs> <laughs> the unexpected Dio was cool. Yeah, unexpected Dio. Like first, like the very first thing you hear is fucking Dio. <laughs> so, um, um, I so I will say. Oh, John, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, for me, it's about the battles, it's about the power scaling, it's about the magic abilities. However, I, I maintain my, my my point. It's hella sus. Every yes, time I watch is. this, I'm like, hey, yo. My like, God, when they did the first stop? episode. In the first just episode. Just stop for half a they... second and just let me watch the battles? Like, can you stop all this sussy shit? <laughs> <laughs> in the in the first episode, there's that scene where they're where he's taking a bath with all like the maids and shit, and I'm like, why? why? Hey yo, <laughs> hey yo, and they're all like fawning over him because Lloyd is super cute. It is just like, and, okay, we and get it. Listen, I get it. I I 100 get it, and I'm just thinking the only thing I can think the whole time I'm watching this is. If the genders were reversed, this would be hella problematic. <laughs> of course. No, of course. it's already hella problematic even without the genders being reversed. It'd what are you be even about? worse. No, no. Publicly, publicly problematic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> But I have uh, I've, I've you guys, some screenshots your, of this no, show too. All of all of your minds are in the gutter. Okay, this is about <laughs> magic and powerful battles. Okay, it's not about any of that sussy shit. Even though Says the a one lot who of told us frames. about this show. <laughs> yeah. Dude, to be I, fair, out, from the outset, he said it's sussy as fuck. <laughs> you know, I, when I originally picked up the manga, I remember I was telling uh, my wife while I was reading, I was like, Ayo, they, why do they draw him like this? Ayo. Like, why is this so sussy? Ayo. And then I just kept <laughs> reading it. I'm like, okay, all this, like, show to bait aside, it's actually pretty cool fighting manga. <laughs> <laughs> It's hilarious. It's like just don't I'm, take it too seriously. I, and I, I'm not like I, I trust me. After the first two episodes, I know I can't take this thing seriously and try to enjoy it. Um, I'm gonna like I'm gonna continue with it against my better judgment. Um, <laughs> sure, against, buddy. Sure. And it, and against the advice of my lawyer. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm just I, saying. Episode two, we meet Tao, and guess what? Tao is 18. I don't remember if they said that in the anime, but they definitely say it in the manga. Tao is 18. So you're A OK on that front. I don't remember if they say that either, but I'm going to keep watching it, and I'm going to like have the same mindset as I do when I want Slime Tensei. I'm just, just not going to take brain. any of it seriously. Yeah, just turn your brain <laughs> off. Just have fun. It's just for fun. Yeah, and try fun. to enjoy the fight scenes when there are fight scenes. Look, it's not as egregious as other shows that have like a lot of lowly or show debate. Okay, <laughs> like it doesn't. Uh, there listen. is definitely a lot of show debate. There is a lot. No, of... no, it's not as sussy as like what's that one you liked last season? Freaking magical. Oh, gushing whatever. over magical girls. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> you want to like? How are you gonna give gushing over magical girls a pass? But think this is too too much. Like fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> I have, yeah, 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 that's that's that. I have nothing to say. <laughs> you have nothing to say. <laughs> like, bro, that was softcore hentai. <laughs> I don't, it, I don't know. Here, At some points, it wasn't even. They weren't even trying to hide it. It wasn't even softcore. <laughs> um. Hit so, Alex, the reason why I uh, I disagree is because I genuinely love um a lot of the animations and the sound design. I genuinely love it. I was there just for the show debate because John mentioned. It. I was like, yeah, let's go for that. But I actually fell in love with uh, a lot of the animation. Uh, it was not itself. a pro. I didn't mention the show debate as a pro. I mentioned it as a like warning. Bro, you hey, gotta remember your audience. You gotta remember who you're talking to. I was giving a disclaimer so people didn't walk into this and go like, "Hey, yo, what the fuck am I watching?" 
<laughs> That's a pro for some people. He's not wrong. It, it is a disclaimer. It wasn't a selling point. It was a disclaimer, damn it. <laughs> That's his story, and he's sticking to it, man. Um. Anyway, no, uh, I especially love how they do the magical formulas uh, as a actual formula board uh, with electricity running through it uh, in place of uh, magical energy. Mm. I love how they form it, uh, how it looks. It looks cool as fuck. It, it's, now, when you see it, it's a lot of like nonsensical sciencey mumbo jumbo type of bullshit that you would like see on a blackboard on some uh show right it, it's mm. that type of stuff no, trust but me, it mumbo looks jumbo. cool how they animate it is cool as fuck and the sound design they associate with that is also really cool i love how it's performed i love the effects it shows and i love everyone's reactions to this uh, magic and the magic formula, especially uh, Grim. Uh, Grim is the straight man to this uh, show, and I love the reactions because he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It is so cool. It's so fun. And I genuinely love that about this show. Dude's the only one taking this shit seriously. So, <laughs> I, I'm gonna just, I'm a, again, disclaimer. Okay, this is a disclaimer. In the next two episodes, there's going to be another A.O. What did I fucking just watch? All right, yeah. this, this is going to be like, A.O. What the fuck? Just disclaimer. Mm. So for anyone who wants to watch Seven Prints, like, I think the magic is cool. I think the effects are cool. I think it's funny. It's not a serious show. But there are very, very definitely suspicious things like this is an anime i can't watch in public <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I like you gotta have some thick skin and you gotta you can't watch this in public at all don't, whatsoever. don't watch this in public and if people you're watching be, it with uh, people you gotta watch it with the right people because certain people will be like looking at you with the side eye or will you, be you like you gotta watch you it gotta with go out of my house now listen you, can't you gotta go watch it with you gotta watch it with some homies who know how to keep a secret <laughs> anyway um can we move on? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Please, I talk. Please, John, for the love of God, talk about the train anime. Please, I gotta hear this. Okay. All right. There's this little anime called "The Train to the End of the World," and it makes literally no fucking <laughs> sense. Okay. Dude went on my... a rampage in our Discord server one night, just yammering about it. My one of my coworkers. He was like, yeah, I watched that train anime. It's real fucking weird. Like, I didn't really get it. I think you got to be high on LSD to fucking get it. I'm like, what does that mean? I have zero idea what that means. Like, is it just a trippy anime? Like, what's it about? So let me let me summarize Train to the End of the World for you. Um, a girl walks past a substation or, a, like, through the train station. She badges through, and then she gets kidnapped by, like, a fucking drone and dropped on top of this roof. And there is this company that's like... We are the new Japanese company launching the launch of 7G. We missed out on 5G, and we were too late in the game for 6G. And all of our haters are say, spreading bad news about us, but that's fake news. They literally say fake news. They say it. They say <laughs> oh fake God. news. Literally. All right? And they're like, but we discovered 7G, and we're going to be the first company to launch it. And you, Miss Ma'am, are the 777,000... Trained customer, so you get to press the button. And she's just like, I, I don't know what's going on. They're just like, press the button, press the button. So then she presses the button, and the 7G warps reality and just like fucks everything up. Now there's dimensional rifts and shit like that. Hold and on, I gotta get my uh, my tinfoil hat ready. Hold on. Listen, this is the first two minutes of the show. This is the first two minutes. <laughs> okay. So, so this, take some LSD, right? <laughs> this this all happens, and then the, the opening sequence happens, like opening song happens. And the opening song is actually kind of a banger, not going to lie. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Uh, and then it cuts to two years later after the 7G incident. Um, we're in this small town, and it's like we get a little backstory. Like, oh, yeah, you know, all the people in this small town, when they turn 21 years old and three months they turn into an animal, and they can't choose what kind of animal they turn into. They just turn into an animal. But they can still speak English. But the th the worry of the kids in the village is, like, they almost get killed by one of the uh, the old guys because he's, like, he's a, a bear. And then he, like, goes feral for a second. And then this girl comes in and, like, doodle fucking flips him. And is like, hey, what the fuck <laughs> what? are you doing? Yes. As you do. 
as you do, you do flip a bear. And then he's like, oh, what was I doing? And they're like, they think in their mind, like, you know, right now it might be fine, but I think people are going to turn feral soon. So we need to fix the 7G shit. So you're just like, okay, what the fuck's actually going on here? I don't know what the hell. But apparently you turn 21, you turn into these animals if you're from this village. And apparently all the other villages are, um, all the other towns and stuff that are still around are affected as well. However, that's like, this village is like, everyone turns into animals. Other villages, people turn into trees. Other, they turn into plants. Other people have like mushrooms on their heads. Weird. Uh, I think so then, whoever wrote this was on mushrooms. So then the, there's this convoy that comes out of this tunnel and it's like it's an armored truck convoy, fucking barbed wire, machine guns on top and shit, covered in blood, like handprints, bloody handprints. And they're just like, hey, we're the Panther Delivery Company. What's up, guys? And it's like, what? Are we just going to skip past the fact that uh, the armored convoy just came through here to drop off supplies to the village and also to take the villages like they grow bitter melons. So they are, they're helping spread the wealth throughout all the, the things. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, with the destruction of the other uh, delivery convoys, we're the only ones left. And it's like, what is happening? And they're like, well, ever since the dimensional rift thing happened, uh, the spaces between towns are different now. So like when they travel between them, there's danger. So it's like it's insinuated, like especially with the blood and the guns and the armored vehicles, like there's some crazy shit out there in the in the middle of the wilds and in the rift. And it's like, oh, and I'm just like, so is this like a horror anime now? Like I don't, <laughs> everything's so happy go lucky, and you know we're introduced to the these four girls, these four cute girls, and they're like, oh yeah, we're just cute girls doing cute things, but also like there's this horror element. I'm like, this isn't like school school live right where it's like the the happy go lucky stuff is just in one character's head because she's fucking crazy and she can't cope with the fact that the zombie apocalypse has happened um it's like it's not it's just a crazy weird anime and the worst part is this is an anime original so it's not based on anything so you can't it's, go see what actually happens i i, I i'm just so confused so very <laughs> confused <laughs> and you know i the the character girl in the beginning she, apparently she's from this village and they find her in a newspaper clipping and they're like oh my god that's the girl why is she in ikabukuro and then the other main character girls were like one specifically like i think it's her best friend or something is like i need to go to ikabukuro so we can make up and be friends I need to go grab her because i haven't seen her in two years after that big fight that we had so she all of a sudden like learns how to pilot a train from some guy who is like, apparently, he, he he was part of the 7G team, and he does a bunch of exposition. Like, when he puts on his hat, he turns into, like, his younger self, and he can actually exposit. But he can only do it for, like, five minutes a day or something. Then he goes back into being an old man who can only say choo-choo. What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, apparently, she learned how to drive this train by listening to him for five minutes every day to learn how to drive this train. So she hops on this train, and she's like, yeah, I'm dropping out of school. I'm going to go save that girl from Ikabukuro. And the other friends are like, oh, we'll go along with you. And that's the first episode. That's it. Jesus Christ. So I looked this up. <clears throat> Apparently, the series composition lead on this, which is like the head writer, is uh, Michiko... Uh, Yo, I can't read this. I'm fucking blind. Yokote, uh, who has worked on several other anime before. Uh, apparently, including Cowboy Bebop, um, I'm pretty sure this is just a pseudonym for Alex Jones, based on what you have said. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I I'm like, all right, there's something interesting here because I want to see what's what's up with the like apocalyptic shit that's happening. What's up with the bloody handprints? Why did all the other delivery companies die out? Like, do they get attacked while they're in there? So episode two starts, and it's like they're piloting this train, and it's like they don't have any enough resources and stuff, and then. Like, the giant flood happens, and it destroys the train tracks. And it's like, they're 30 stops away from Ikabukuro from where they are in, um... I don't actually remember where they were. I don't think they were in Nagano. They were in somewhere... Asami, Asai, or something. I, I, doesn't somewhere matter. Somewhere in Japan land. They are 30 stops away from Ikabukuro. And basically, <clears throat> two hours... Being, like, 20 stops away from, like, a certain area in Japan, you could, it could be, like, anywhere between, like, two or three hours of travel by train. Yeah. And it is explained in the universe that distances between towns are different now. So we don't actually understand the passage of time that you go through while you go to different towns. And it's just, it's a weird freaking show, dude. I don't understand what's going on. I don't hate the show because I'm like, it doesn't do anything egregious enough 
for me to but hate it. But you just want to understand. You want to understand. It just doesn't make sense. I want to know what's going on. You it's want so to weird. believe. It's so confusing. And, you know, I I don't think you can just slap cute girls onto something and just, like, be like, yeah, it's fine. It's got cute girls doing stuff, and it's fine. It's like, uh, I disagree on that. That, that, that. that formula has worked for years for a reason. <laughs> I'm just saying there is an upper limit to how much bullshit I can tolerate just because you put <laughs> cute girls in front of it, okay? <laughs> like, listen, just yeah. because you slap cute girls onto it does not automatically make it good. He's well, right, I guess you know. I guess I'll wait until John uh, has a couple more episodes to let me know if it's worth it or not. Hey, for I, all we know, this could end up being like a hidden gem eventually, like um, Magical Destroyers was. Like, uh, I don't true. know. I don't know about that, honestly speaking. Well, well, I guess we'll find out. The reason I say that is because, like, at least Magical Destroyers had other things going on for it, like the soundtrack, sound design. And Pink. It had Pink. And, um, well, I didn't even meet Pink in the first two episodes. I think she comes in in episode three. Because I'm pretty sure think, it's oh, yeah, red, blue, right. then Pink. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, at least it had other stuff going on for it, right? Like, the premise yeah. was wacky, and it had cute girls, but... The OP like, was crazy. Was, the OP and the ED were amazing. The sound design was amazing. So there were other things going on for the show. I don't think Train to the End of the World has anything else going on for it other than, like, there are cute girls. Mm. And That's a it. batshit crazy story so far. Yeah, a batshit crazy story that doesn't make any sense. I don't know, maybe the mystery of the story is supposed to be the hook. I'm gonna keep watching it. I, cause I, I need to know. I like, might, some can you know cost what? fallacy at this point, you know. I, I might, I might give this a shot too, just based on how weird it is. I'll wait. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm certain by episode six, I'll have a better opinion of like whether you should watch it or not. That'll be on the next uh, monthly dump. Yeah. <laughs> right. Shinoda. Yes. Yeah, Shinoda, come on. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I, waiting, I was waiting like waiting for you. Uh, waiting for a fucking invitation kind of if it decides to pull up come on okay there we go bartender um, talk about fucking bar bartender yes i know i got it up um <laughs> wait pause hold on <laughs> anyway bartender anime i really like it it's slow it's methodical it um it has it's a slow? swap quality to it yeah, I think it's huh? slow. Oh, slow. Slow. I thought you said it's low. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> get low, low, low. It gets real low. <laughs> no. Um, it's slow in the terms of the fact that it has a more real life pace, and you know what? That's not bad from time to time. Um, I've only watched the first episode so far, but I really enjoyed the quality of it. The um care that they give to uh bartending the story of uh of it and the alcohol looks fucking good <laughs> i love that um it looks like it's a interesting show the animation is really pretty especially the still arts uh that they have it looks good um and the sound design is not bad actually I don't know if it's the greatest thing ever yet. I, I have to listen to more of it. But as it is, it, it sounds so uh, decent off the bat. Now, this is I understand an anime. that... Oh, go ahead, go. I understand that Bartender, this one is a remake of the original? Yes, this yes. is a and remake. I, and I'm we, we looked at the Mal, and I'm pretty sure the original was pretty well received. It yeah, was. and it's pretty old, too, like 20 years old, I think. I have no idea how old it is, but um, yeah, it's like the other, the only other thing I know about is that you refuse to take your L. <laughs> you need to oh. take this L, sir. <laughs> take the L. What? Take your L. <laughs> you were wrong. About? You were talking about, oh, didn't Natai talk about bartender? Like, no, oh, this not this shit again. Oh my god! <laughs> I need to just. Wait, he had it originally on the list. No, though. he didn't. He said didn't he, he, did he didn't. That? I did. No, nope. I did. He, it was only Alex. You he were wrong Alex. about everything you said. That you was were wrong. wrong. You. That I was, was like, I was like, literally, he wasn't on the recording. And also, here's the doc. He didn't have it on his list. 
Now, right. Natai, Natai did. even said, Natai was like, bro, Chinoda, you need to take the L because I did want to talk about bartender, but I never wrote it down. So <laughs> I must have been you, remembering that he wanted to talk about it somewhere. He it didn't say anything, that. bro. He didn't That's say anything. That's what I'm like, uh, what, then where am I remembering it from? Because I, it was Alex. You're misremembering no, but I'm Alex. Saying before that, I like remember Natai talked about it at some point. Bro, your brain made it up, man. Just take yeah, the your L. Your brain completely have. made that up. It you take to. the L. <laughs> Sir, you take that L. Take it. Also, I did I did look it up. It is the original that right. this new Bartender remake is based off of is nearly 20 years old. It came out in 2006. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Like, so what is the premise of the show? Like, it's just about a bartender. Like, we just go up to the bar and he makes us a drink and we tell him our worries. Yeah, pretty much. It's very much a slice, slice of life. Of life. Uh, oh? Yeah. It's like, okay. dude's a, a, a top tier bartender, uh, like, has gotten awards for it kind of thing. And he just makes you the type of drink you need. And you explore your life <laughs> while drinking. The kind of bartender where you tell him what mood you're in and he makes you a drink. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it's feel that like type this of show. Is, um... it's, it's low. It's very relaxed. And... Which, if you ever come across bartenders like that, tip them well. Yeah, seriously. Bar good bartenders are... Well, Unless you're th there's in Japan. a reason they're in the Don't industry. do that shit in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese people get angry if you give them tips. Ooh. There are certain places in Tokyo right now that are accepting tips. Because they're like, oh, oh, we can make extra money. Oh, yeah, it's it's garbage. They're I saw I saw a video parts of America. I, yeah, I know, right? I saw a uh, I saw a video that someone posted one time about it was I think it was an American tourist because of course it is um, that tried to give like someone in a restaurant or a, a bar a tip, and boy did they get angry! Oh my god, did they get angry! <laughs> Yeah, because apparently it, culturally it's seen as if you give someone a tip for something they're expected to do, it's insulting. It's like that in France too. Yeah, yeah. you don't tip in France. Yeah, you don't tip. You don't tip in Germany. You don't tip anywhere else except the U.S. Actually, <laughs> yeah, tip, tipping culture is crazy and stupid, and I hate it. Yay, capitalism! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, if you want to just give someone extra money for doing a bang up job, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to. But you shouldn't be expected to do it. <laughs> anyway, I haven't watched this yet. I definitely intend to, though, because it definitely seems my speed. Also, no, it's alcohol, it's am I right? A, <laughs> it's something you as an al alcoholic would definitely love, I will say. Like, yes. I'm pretty sure this is one of those things, uh, one of those shows that a lot of people are going to be uh, recreating the recipes that they make from the show. Because they oh, yeah, there's always give like detail. a, a show they give detailed that, instructions that, yeah. in the show. Yeah. 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 Like uh, last season was um, Dungeon Meshi. Everyone's recreating Dungeon yeah. Meshi food. Yes. Um, speaking of anime that do that, um, Yudo Camp season three, my favorite comfy girls are back. Uh, I listen. They're, the, it's the comf my heart needs right now. It really is. Um, so Yoda Camp season three airing right now. I mentioned it during the preview. Um, this new season is being uh, the first two seasons were done by a studio called Sea Station. Uh, this new season, or yeah, this new season is being done by Eight Bit, which uh, one of my favorite studios going right now because of how fucking good they are, especially like background art, um, which is something I did want to mention. And I showed this to John in our Discord server. He refused to believe that that's not actual... anime. That's not anime. Bro, they literally just took pictures and put an anime filter on it. <laughs> no, well, what they did, and they're they're I, what it looks like they're doing is a similar process that they did at Sea Station. So it is actual photographs of real places, but what they do is they go and they paint like matte coloring over the um, the photographs, and then they use like digital effects, like a software, to add in lighting and weather effects. Uh, so that seems like what they're doing and sea station did that too. Um, and it looked great. Like the background art for both of the first two seasons of Yudo camp were fantastic. Eight bit is going above and beyond what they have to do. And boy, Oh, the, the background art in the first episode was just absolutely amazing. Um, 
Also, I love the new OP and ED. It's just, oh, uh, I love this show. It's so comfy. I also, really, really watch it. Around. It'll it'll heal your hearts. I promise. I really Fuck need you, to get around to watching this. John, I know there's a black hole where your heart should be, but give it a shot. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm sure it's a great show. You know, I'm I'm sure I I did enjoy it. I'm still not gonna watch it. <laughs> like if I'm not gonna watch Konosuba season two yet and season three and the spinoff, what makes you think I'm gonna go start Eurocamp? <laughs> True. Would you not I, consider I... Konosuba more like high priority than Eurocamp? Come on. Yeah. Um. But yeah, something else I definitely expect because the first two seasons had it um, was really cool, like campfire food. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with for uh, this season because I want to try and make it. That's it. That's all I got for you to camp. Like, I'm just I'm super excited this is back and I'm I'm just, oh, it's so comfy. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Comfy Show is back for you. You always love that mm. shit. I mean, I'm not. Here comes the every freaking week. Oh my god, you're camp. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. It's like, god, Look, we get it. Up... <laughs> Every one of us has that one show. <laughs> Let him have his. <laughs> Listen. All right, from a slow want... paced. Com... Well, hold on. From a slow paced comfy show, I really want John to talk about a high paced shitty show. I I really didn't want to talk about this because do I, it. I, do it. Okay. So I remember we talked about high speed etoile, etoile, however you freaking etoile. I don't speak. I don't parlay vous français anymore. So however you pronounce it, uh, it it was just actually I I thought it was gonna be very bad based off of just the preview because it's full CGI. It didn't look like it had very much action, and somehow I walked away more disappointed. <laughs> than, than, than that that's impressive because, what happened <laughs> so you watch the entire first episode it's like it's freaking first of all you don't get introduced to the main character until 19 minutes into the show when huh? at the very end of the first you don't know you don't get introduced to the main character until the very end of the fucking episode okay that's a bold that's choice. rough buddy and I was just like, okay, weird. Uh, there was freaking Wish.com, Miku, and Luca as idols <laughs> inside of it. What? And I'm just like, what? The, what? <laughs> yes. They're Wish.com versions of uh, Miku, Hatsune Miku and uh, Megurune Luca. But I was just like, okay, that's weird. They look very similar. Same color scheme, same hairstyles in the idol outfits. I'm like, are they going for like, uh, like what is this going on? Um, I definitely think this is part of some money laundering scheme between <laughs> Good Smile. Um, oh my God, who's the the guys who make um, Enterprise, uh, the ships? Uh, uh, Star Trek. Yo no. Star. Yo Star. Thank you. Uh, so Good Smile, Yo Star, and Honda, because they're the sponsors that you see in the racetracks. And I'm like, this is definitely a money laundering scheme between the three companies. <laughs> Because I don't know why else they would make this stupid show. Uh, the CGI is bad. The racing looks bad. Uh, the voice acting, god awful. Like, I, I shared a comment, a screenshot of a comment that was like, Formula One should sue this anime because it replicates Formula One so well with the bad voice acting or with the bad um, <laughs> voice casting with the stupid rules that they can't uh, do and like these penalties that they don't enforce and this and that. I'm like, what? Hold on, watch... I'm gonna go find that comment because it's absolutely true. Hold on, I like I don't watch Formula One, so I have no idea what that comment is about. But I was just like, I'm rolling because there's other people saying like, yeah, it's basically just Formula One, the anime, which is terrible okay. because the state of Formula <laughs> One is garbage right now. Here's the actual comment on on Crunchyroll's website from a user called Pochiter69, which great name nice. by the way. <laughs> absolutely dead and emotionless commentary speed of the car is not captured dominant five-time world drivers champion overtakes under only under safety car <laughs> dull and boring race more billion miles straights stewards don't give a penalty for literally sending your opponent into the wall one driver forming a train behind them they absolutely nailed what it's like to watch a formula one race in 2024 <laughs> If I were the FIA, I'd be suing for copyright. <laughs> oh, fuck. Which, for those who don't watch it, I do watch Formula One. My God, it is really that boring so far this year. 
the same drivers winning every race. The same teams are finishing one, two. Yeah. And then like, uh, so all that aside, the bad CGI and the bad voice acting, uh, the expressions on the faces are freaking dull. They don't, they don't move. They like, you'll see them move like this. Their lips will be moving, but they won't be doing any facial expressions at all. And it's like, wow, they're supposed to be talking like this. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I, I wanted to win. And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, no have, they ever heard of, have they ever heard of emoting? <laughs> this is why I say this is a money laundering scheme. Um, on top of all of that, there is also the fact that they, uh, apparently this is next-gen racing, right? It's Formula 1, but next-gen. There's this new energy that they harvested from fossil fuels that are is super mega efficient. And we also have AIs in our racing cars now. But the AIs are the things that don't that make it so you can't do overtakes unless it's safe, which is dumb. Because I'm like, that's that's real dumb. <laughs> um, and the sound mixing on the AIs, onboard AIs, is so garbage. Like, you can barely hear them. It's supposed to be like it's supposed to be in their car in front of them, but you can hear them like they're fucking across the street, just like, uh, "Hey, can you hear me over here?" And it's like, "What the fuck's going on with the sound mixing?" Hey, um, you all good over there? Yeah, and it's just like it's garbage. <laughs> like, what, what, what is actually going on here? This has to then, be money laundering from everything I hear about I, this. And the reason I got so upset is because you get to the end of the first episode and they have an end card and it's fucking beautiful. Oh my god. The guy who does the end card for this, he does a lot of great anime art. So one of the key animators, or the key art uh, guys, like key art maker, he does phenomenal work. And like what he did for the posters for this, for the end card for the first episode, what he actually draws, it's amazing. It looks great. I am pissed off that they would get a, a key artist to do this beautiful art and then make this fucking full cgi crap like <laughs> I, I was so pissed off like why would they waste this man's time and talent like good thing you got paid for this but holy shit bro i can't believe you would you would give them gold and they would just take a shit all over it <laughs> well what mm. the hell <sighs> it's got to be a, some kind of a scheme like it's like someone said what's the least amount of money we can make an anime for because we got some money we got to clean and you know to me i'm like you know what i think that um good smile and yo star and honda want to get in on the um racing uh figures i that's what i really think because yeah. good smile racing sells like the the racing miku stuff but they have to share uh, profits with um krypton they probably don't want to share profits that much more profits with Krypton, and they're like, "Well, our racing Miku gear uh, sells really well, so because you know, I I have a bunch of racing Miku gear. <laughs> I like buying the ra racing Good Smile Racing is really cool, like branded stuff, and the racing Miku mm -hmm. stuff is really cool in my opinion. So I like wearing stuff like that, like for shirts and hats and stuff like that. So I I understand that it sells well. So they obviously talked to Honda and Yoast. I was like, hey, we can turn it into racing stuff, because like uh, I believe they have Enterprise as at as part of the first um, end card in part of the high speed Etoile like character lineup. There's like I characters surprised. from um, other oh Yostar properties. Yeah, there's characters from Yostar properties in the end card, and Enterprise is one of them. And it's like, it looks great. It looks beautiful. I love this end card art. I wish it was animated like this. It would be a <laughs> lot more popular if it was, instead of full yeah. CGI. Like, Making stuff CGI because you want to do artistic direction makes sense, right? There's certain mm -hmm. things you can shoot and frame in, in CGI, in 3D CG, right? Mm. But they don't take advantage of any of that for this stupid show. They they literally do nothing. Like, the, it's the same texture packs. That's There's crazy. Literally, if you're not a character in the show, you don't even have facial details. You're just faceless. You're a puppet in the stands. And it's like, what the f Like, it's just so bad how little money can we spend to make an actual anime? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'm telling you, it's a money laundering scheme, dude. It's money laundering. They're going to be selling a shitload of figures. And the worst part is it's probably going to work. The figures themselves are going to be really popular and they're going to sell really well. I think I guarantee you that even probably. though the anime was shit, the figures are popular and that's all that fucking matters. You know how so they sell even more confirms? figures? <laughs> yeah. Do you know how they'll sell even more figures? Make a better anime. <laughs> yeah. So I just, it made me so upset. And I'm going to watch the second episode because I'm like, I didn't even get to see the character because I thought the most ridiculous thing about this show was going to be the fact that the main character is apparently a prodigy racer who used to be a ballet dancer, but broke her foot. Yeah, she, yeah, she broke her foot. That baffles me. And then she became a, an ultra neat. 
And then they discover that she's actually an amazing driver, even though she used to be a ballet dancer and is an ultra neat. I'm like, that by itself as a synopsis is fucking wild. I thought that's what the show was going to be about. I didn't see any of that in the first episode because quite literally in the last minute we get introduced like, hey, we have this new up and coming racer. And she's like, you know, racing is just like ballet. And I'm like, you know, I don't race. I don't do ballet. So I, I can't say for certain if racing is just like ballet. I don't know. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're saying like, oh, racing is akin to listening to classical music. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> The room Maybe of the engine. I don't, I don't know, bro. Like, is this supposed to be some profound statement? I don't know. I'm going to watch the second episode, and I'm probably going to, like, drop it after that. But Jesus, man. You know, it's what funny. Is show? You mean, it, it's funny you mentioned that because there's an old, like, I forget who it was that said that some race car driver a long time ago said that racing is like playing chess at 200 miles an hour, and I'm only smart enough for checkers. <laughs> that's pretty funny i like that's that. brilliant <laughs> all right can we move on from that yes garbage fire? please so moving on from garbage to quality garbage mushoko dance season two part what two. do you mean what do you mean it's peak fuck that garbage talk <laughs> um no so season two part two finally here and it's so fucking adorable i'm oh my god rudis is so happy selfie is so happy Listen, it's yes you guys we, john you still, we've been hearing you guys this for still, so long you guys still don't understand why selfie actual best girl all right i'm i i will tell you when it pops up why selfie is actually best girl all right mm. not okay. there yet. I mean, we're I, almost there I believe you. you I know you, you said, said it happens it, this season. If if it goes where I think it's going to go, it should happen this season, yes. But why Sylvie is best girl? You said it, it'll either be near the end of this season or at the very beginning of the next. Yeah, I don't know how fast they're going to get to where they need to get to to do all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure but you'll I, figure it sure out in be, a couple episodes. I think it's going to be this season, though. Okay. Okay. But either way, it's back. It's Peach super, back. like, just the first episode, so damn cute. It's just adorable as hell. And, like, it has, it has big season one energy, and I'm, I'm just here for it. I, I, it was so adorable, and I had such a fun time. I, yeah, I, I don't episode, have though, much, right? much else to say, honestly. Well, there, there wasn't much that went on in the first episode, bro. <laughs> yeah. He goes he's and buys a house. Happy Brutus back. buys a he's, house. <laughs> he, yeah. He's just happy it's back. I mean, I don't blame him. It's a great anime. I thought that yeah. the uh, the comment sections was hilarious, though. They're like, RIP to all the millennials. <laughs> you gotta go buy a house <laughs> right, before you can right. actually Everyone's get staring at Brutus in jealousy. <laughs> Motherfucker bought a mansion. <laughs> he's not even an adult yet. <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know this is a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's Affordable how you know housing. it's a fantasy. <laughs> Bought a mansion at 17. That's the most unbelievable thing I've seen about Mushoku Tensei so far. <laughs> Not the magic and the dragons or the isekai. No, it's, no, it's buying a buy house a before you're 18. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, looking forward to it. I'm not going to watch this week to week because I know... Boo, boo this man. Boo this I, man. Listen, I know that we are eventually going to do a spoiler cast on it because we've done a spoiler cast for every other part of Mushoku Tensei. I want to wait until we're almost ready to record it. That way it can all be very fresh in my mind. That's fair. Can we, since that was such a short topic, can we talk about how MHA is insulting you? I I, I want yeah. to know what you mean by this. So, so instead of airing the first episode, what they're doing is the first four episodes is going to be recap episodes. That is bullshit. Yeah. I hate it because it is treating the viewers like fucking toddlers. And, like, let's be uh, right. real. So, some, some of the of people who started this show when it first aired were toddlers <laughs> <laughs> way back then. Now, and it's been years since then. Like, come on. Give people I... a little respect. They'll remember stuff. I'd have to do research on why they decided to do four recap episodes because it's like... 
it'd be one thing if it was like it's been years since the last season of MHA, but like it's only been a year, right? It's yeah, like it's a, only a been a year. A year, yeah. So I I don't know why they do recap episodes. Um, I, I understand having like a portion of your first episode being a recap of things that happened last season. Listen, all I'm saying is Dark Deku arc was supposed to be the most hype thing, and it was the most boring thing I've ever seen. It was in my meta life. shit. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I so just I say like, it it. it it pleases me to no end every time you say Deku instead of Deku. It's a Deku because it's a Deku tree and it's a Deku nut. <laughs> oh, it's nutty, all right. That's for sure. Here we go. Now you're unlocking primal senpai memories here. It's from the before times. But yeah, no. So, I mean, it, it, it's apparently going to have little bits of uh, things that they haven't shown here and there. But I'm just like, just put that into bro i don't care into actual <laughs> I don't, episodes i don't, I don't either just i'll wait for everything for all the fight scenes to be uploaded to youtube with some crazy cringy like lincoln park amv movie like music whatever <laughs> these kids don't even know it. what lincoln park is <laughs> well, that's true actually <laughs> um no nah, I, I i'm like john like i, I don't care i posted um, a, a article in the chat for you guys i don't to... care <laughs> Well, for John. Uh, can I, I say something I, I hate, gonna, though? I'm not going to open this link, bro. Like, I don't care. What do you I hate? Don't, I, can, can I say something I hate, though? And it's something that I've seen a couple of times now, and it, it's kind of alarming me. I really don't want to see anime do this, um, <clears throat> especially anime that have source material, do this on a regular basis. When there's been maybe a couple of years in between seasons... And they have like the first episode of the new season is like a recap of what happened before, or they have something that's, you know, like part of that first episode is a recap. I've seen a few anime that will also put in the recap, the stuff they yada yada over in the first season from the source material. Don't do this. This is stupid. Yeah, I hate that. I genuinely hate it when anime do that because I'm like, either include it or don't. But like, if you magically put it in later, it makes less sense. Yes, please don't do this, Anime Studios. It's 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 really dumb, and nobody likes it. I opened it. up and... the link. I'm reading it now. Um, <laughs> I thought you weren't interested, but yeah. Well, no, I was it's wondering. Really stupid. Um, is it is it going to be like four out of the twelve episodes that they're going to air? Is it going to be recap? No, like, no so it's, just, it, um, it's just recap, and then they'll air the like. No, it's, it's a month recap, before they'll then start they'll air the it. Like. Yeah. Like, if you look at it on Mal, uh, it's listed as four recap episodes as a separate thing, as a special or whatever. And the next season is counted as a whole thing. So it's basically we're getting four OVA um, recap episodes first. I think they just needed an extra month to work on the season. Yeah, you're <laughs> probably I, I think you're right, but still, I'm just like... That's fine. Christ, no, come you know on. What? Just... Listen... It's it. They're drip feeding you a story, and it's like, look, we can just reuse that. This is nothing new, right? They, no, it's they've not. done this before. Anime studios have, have done this before. It's not anything new. It's fine, dude. Like I, I, I've gotten a lot more patient in my old age, so I, I'm fine with just waiting. Like mm -hmm. I think it's shitty that they don't just be like, hey, um, just tell us that you need another month. But I understand that, like for example, Zom 100, because they had to take that. Was it three month delay? It was yeah. at least it was a significant delay, like a couple, like a month or whatever long delay to release the last three episodes. Mm. Uh, it it like it killed was more their than fucking views. Yeah, yeah, it was more than, but it, it killed their views basically. Yeah, it killed, it killed the, the momentum of that series. Which so I understand that like it's we may hate it, but the slow drip feeding is how you sustain numbers. Yeah, that's absolutely. Like, well, I would uh, hold on. I would argue that. For something as big, I hate to say this, but something as big as MHA, that wouldn't matter. Um, well, like I said, the numbers don't lie. Statistically speaking, like when you have subsequent episodes of shows, having them closer together, release dates, like you know, for things, gives you higher numbers. That's just how yeah. it is. Like, you can say, uh, I hate it, but you're right. Because people's retention, like, you gotta understand, a lot of anime viewers are people who don't read the source material, all right? Yeah. I would hazard a guess and say that people who are watching MHA still like MHA, but probably don't like it enough to go read the manga because they're anime only. It's like a huge amount of people. Yeah. A huge I would say it's, prob just it's probably more than 60 to 70%. I don't 
I, I don't have actual numbers to give you, but it's like that slow drip feed works. Like hmm. either you drop all of it at once to binge it or you drop it every week so people can slowly feed off of it. Hmm. You have to do one of the two. You just have the, to. Oh, I will say one example where I've seen doing like, you know, drip and then break, drip, break where it worked was Arcane. That's the one. It's the one instance I can think of where it worked because they released three episodes at a time, took a two week break, then three more episodes, two week break, three more episodes. Yeah, but each episode was like an hour long. Yeah, forty five minutes to an hour long. So, it's like three episodes at forty five minutes, basically an hour if we look at it in terms of TV time. That's like yeah. watching six episodes in freaking two weeks. That's yeah. a lot of episodes to watch. But it worked. Yeah. And because the well, hype that's a never formula died that down. can work, yeah, yeah. yeah. They so were able to, when you have quality if, if they had, if they had released all those episodes in one day, the hype would have died down after two weeks, maybe three. I don't think so. I think it would have taken a full month, maybe. But then now like they've sustained like that month, over monthly, two, a two know. month period. But I, you know, Arcane was super popular because League of Legends is just super popular. So I, I think yeah. that one's a harder... I think League of Legends is probably popular than My Hero Academia. Like Internationally, yeah, I would agree. Internationally, probably, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, <laughs> let's compare how many entries on League of Legends there are versus MHA on Rule 34. Like, we can actually... <laughs> we can quantify <laughs> this. Which one is more popular based off of the amount of porn made of it? <laughs> it's the porn numbers that One do moment, matter. I will tell you. <laughs> this man but welcome to the club alex of uh, looking at stuff while we're doing the podcast i uh, look at me look at me i am jamie now <laughs> anyway uh i want to talk about uh an actual good shonen <laughs> please <laughs> please dear god have either of you watched windbreaker no, no but i've heard good things i haven't even heard anything about it yet so tell me <laughs> all right so I was like, what is this show called The Windbreaker? Like, he who breaks wind is a funny thing to, like, say. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, what? Is he who breaks wind, right? Like, it's, it's about someone farting. Yeah, yeah. Windbreaker. If you're a windbreaker, you're either it's you're like, a farter. an yeah. actual windbreaker or you fart, right? That's like, it makes me chuckle because I'm a child on the inside. Uh, but I, I watched this and I was just like, <laughs> originally i was like is this the jujutsu kaisen killer because it's like it's got fluid animation this is done by uh i believe it's cloverworks oh um it's fluid animation it's about fighting and i was like is this the jjj uh jjk killer just because you know like i thought that'd be a cool title thing but it doesn't have weird fucking anime powers it's literally about people like delinquents fighting so i was like this is more like tokyo revengers than anything else yeah that's what it sounds um, like I did a little bit of research. Apparently, the person who created Windbreaker is actually a fan of Tokyo Revengers. Oh! So, it's kind of like, that's why they have similarities. But, unlike Tokyo Revengers, it's about a... Well, I guess it's kind of like Tokyo Revengers. So, Windbreaker is about a, a guy who's a outcast. Um, because he's born with, like... Uh, was it heterochromia? The two different eye colors? Yeah, yeah it's heterochromia. heterochromia. Yeah. So, he's born with, like, heterochromia. And then he has, like, his half his hair is white, half his hair is black. And he's always been ostracized for being weird and different. So he decides, like, oh, well, since people hate me, I'm just going to go fight people. Just <laughs> That's the story. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me I need a sip of water. Okay. I, I, um, so I, I have watched... an answer for you. I have okay, an answer for you. Which one is more popular based on the porn on Rule 34? All right. Uh, so uh, My Hero Academia has roughly 5,000 images that doesn't League sound of legends right. has ninety one thousand. <laughs> see 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 now Hold did on. you look at my hero academia or boku no hero academia boku no hero academia because it's the only one that comes up okay well, that doesn't sound right i feel like yeah, there that, should that be does not that sound those right. numbers are low i'm just telling you what's on rule maybe 34. because i don't think rule 34 does like dojenshis and stuff like that no they don't no. So yeah, that doesn't count Dojinshi. It's just like actual like drawn images yeah, and like people videos. like pixel artists and stuff like that. That still it sounds really animation. low for I'm both just, of them. I'm just telling you what's on here. I'm, All I'm saying is, I wonder if there's been a purge lately or something. I don't know. I I actually don't use Rule Thirty Four. Like I I quote it all the time and I never use it. So, <clears throat> but anyway, Windbreaker is everyone knows. About... 
um, Windbreaker is about delinquents fighting, and there's this guy, he joins this new city, and he's just like, he just wants to fight people, because he's, he's an angsty teenage boy who, who doesn't fit in, and I'm just like, yo, I was a teenager once with angst, this is right up my alley, <laughs> and um, John's what's like, cool I about... relate to this. <laughs> well, it's like, he wants, he doesn't, he thinks he's uh, unwanted, and he hasn't doesn't have a place to fit in, but he's still a nice guy, like, he saves his one lady from getting um, harassed by delinquents by just, like, stomping the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. And then she, like, pays him back by taking him to her cafe and, like, here, have an omelet rice. And then, like, there's this old guy who finishes eating, and then he forgets his stuff. And the delinquent kid is like, hey, old man, you forgot your stuff. And it's just like, oh, he's a good boy. You know, he, he wants to be liked by people, but he's been rejected by of gold. People. Yeah, and I'm just like, reasonable, right? He's like Fonzie from Happy Days. <laughs> so then um he transfers to the school called Fooding and he's like I transferred to it because I heard it's the most delinquent school and I'm going to become I'm going to become the top fighter at at Fooding and then um the gang that he fought earlier comes back like with all of the gang members to like fuck up the town and stomp him out so then he goes and fights them and then like he's uh trying to protect the uh lady from being attacked and he like and then the kids from Fooding show up and then they're like, they, then they start fucking fighting, like street <laughs> brawl. And I'm like, yo, I can, re- I, re- I resonate with this. I remember doing that shit. <laughs> like, let's fight. Hands up. Let's go. And it's like, uh, again, the fight scenes are cool. They're well animated, like really well animated. I think the soundtrack is pretty good. Uh, but the main story is that he comes to the school to go to uh, Fooding High because he thinks it's the, the number one delinquent school. But as it turns out, two years ago, it changed. It used to be the number one delinquent school. But two years ago, something happened at uh, Fudin where they decided, this is our territory now, and if anyone comes here and messes with our peace, we'll kick the shit out of you. We are the Bull Fudin now. And so now it's like a, a school of delinquents that protect the uh, their neighborhood from that other delinquents. so schools. wholesome. What the and fuck? I'm just like, hey, yo, like, turf wars with schools? I remember doing that shit in middle school. <laughs> oh, man. I resonate with this hella. <laughs> so uh, and it's just like, I... I'm pretty excited for it just because it's it's action. I like shonen, uh, and you know the the whole like found family thing, like trying to fit in, finding a group of people that will mm-hmm. accept you for who you are. Like they don't discriminate against this guy being like the fuck's wrong with you. You look weird. They go like the um the leader who comes in and saves the main character guy in the beginning is just like you fucking idiot. If you're hurt, don't move. I can't protect you if you move. And then the guy's like, I don't need no one to protect me. And then the other uh, the leader guy was like kick someone else's ass like just shut up and sit there you idiot get healed and then i'm like yo let's go get healed (laughs) yeah healed dumb bitch it's 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 a cool show i like the first episode i'm looking forward to watching it just because again it's fighting it's got very fluid animations good job i've heard very good things from like two or three different people now i'll wait a couple of episodes to see how the momentum is um i'll wait on that but this sounds interesting. I've only watched the first season of Tokyo Revengers. I need to watch the other two seasons, but I did like mm. that. So if this is similar to that, I'll probably yeah. like it. Like Gang Wars, Wait, Turf Wars. L- other l- than the, the whole like, time drip? travel, they they don't look that cool now. Oh, that's disappointing. One of the lo- things the I drip, loved about... It's about the spirit. No, no, no. no. Let, me, let me finish. One of the things I loved about Tokyo Revengers is the drip. They're, the the oh, drip yeah, game yeah. In, in that was fucking nasty. I love that shit. Don't also you know, you love that swastika. Oh my god, no. Something about Don't Tokyo Revengers it. is um, it's got a lot more of a convoluted story in Tokyo Revengers compared to this. Mm. It does. Because this, yeah. was, this is pretty cut and dry. Like It's about found family. It's about finding play, a place to belong and then just fighting. Just straight up like brawling with people. Yeah, no, that sounds a lot more simple, and simple isn't bad sometimes. Yeah, I I like it. You know, it may not be like a masterpiece, but it's still pretty decent. Okay. okay. Uh, any names attached to it? I, I did not look that far into it. Okay. <laughs> I just knew that, because I was just like, this seems very similar to um, Tokyo Revengers, and I was reading, like, comments on the video. I'm like, yeah, no, the guy who created this said he loves Tokyo Revengers. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I, that tracks. <laughs> That okay. tracks. This is very much the spiritual successor to that. All right. Now, I know you guys both have additional stuff on your list, but I think this is a good stopping point. We've been going for over uh, two hours now. 
Yeah, I I mean, I, th- I really want to talk about the next one because I think it's hilarious, but I can save it for the next episode, I guess. Okay. Well, you'll have more to talk about, too. I mean. Oh, I I might want. I Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I won't watch more. I don't know. We'll it's save it. Very, we'll which save one? It for the uh, the Tadaima Okaidi. Oh, the gay dads. It's, bro, it's not just that. Really? I, I, I was planning on watching it tonight, so. So, I, I wrote down here. Tadaima Okari isn't just gay, it's Omegaverse super gay. Okay, I'm looking forward to it then. We'll talk about I, it next time. <laughs> my wife knows, what I, thought, I was like, isn't Omegaverse something that you know about? And she started go, like gushing about it. She was like, oh my god, Omegaverse? And I'm just like, so I had her explain to me a bunch of stuff that didn't make sense. And I'm just like, there's so much more to Omegaverse than I thought, and I think it's dumb as shit. <laughs> It's like, like, look, no, let me, fun little story. The other day, Tommy was talking to some of his VTuber friends and like, I heard the Omega verse uh, pop up. Now, this is a whole different thing. It's some anime that's coming out. But as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh no, I have to stop Tommy. I have to stop him from finding out. <laughs> yeah. So Tadaima Okaidi has Omega verse in it, which if, if you know what that is and you like it, you might like Tadaima Okari. I I will do a, a deeper dive into the show probably next, next time. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, that being said, uh, thank you everyone for stopping by to watch us talk about the things we've been watching so far this uh, spring anime season. Uh, don't forget to like, con- comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below if you like what you saw and you want to see more. It really does help us out. Um, you can also check down below where you can find links to all the places you can follow Anime Club After Dark. There's also a link. Oh, there's a cat. Hello, cat. That's our mascot. <laughs> No, our mascot is in the bottom right corner. <laughs> no, no, that's her sister. Okay, okay. Uh, you can also find a link to the Anime Club After Dark merch store if you'd like to uh, purchase some uber cool Anime Club After Dark merch. Um, but with all that being said, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. <laughs> oh, look at TJ. <laughs> oh, my God. How is that not peeking his mic? What the fuck? I don't.